Hey guys, Deathstone Magic here, and the big math mystery from earlier today in the why the heck is this happening, but we're still breaking arena anyway video. In a record time of like right around four hours, uh, we already got uh, the, the winning comment explaining it. It's uh, SKFOT. He said, so my speculation is this. Maybe the number of counters goes up to 2 to the 30th power minus 1, so obviously signed then, uh, because the base power and toughness of a creature only goes up that high as well, making the total between the two then be a resulting of 2 to the 31st power minus 1. Uh, whatever the accurate number is, he says. Well, that, that is the accurate number. Uh, so that it is basically a signed 32-bit integer combined. I can't think of any other reason. Not that this makes much sense either. Oh, but it does. Have more confidence in your answer because I verified it and it is correct. I'll get to how I tested it in a second. So, why would the number of positive 1-1 one, one counters, because remember, negative 1-1 one, negative one counters are a different type of counter, why would the number of positive 1-1 one, one counters be a signed integer? When would it ever go negative? And the answer is because it's added to the power and toughness, which can go negative. And uh, adding and subtracting non-like uh, memory locations and differently sized memory values and stuff is generally not a great idea. People do it as a shortcut, but it's not exactly best practices in the programming world. So they also made the number of counters a signed integer, even though it'll never be negative. So if you make the power and toughness limit be 1.07 whatever billion, and then you make the number of counters be limited, like hard limited in the code to like manually the programmer typed out this number. So half of 2.1 billion, which is the highest value it can be. Then when you add them together, they'll never overflow. I thought, why would they put an overflow protection in a creature's power and toughness and, and counters and all that crap when they didn't put it in the life total? And the answer is because it's not the same programming team. If you look at the uh, jobs website for Wizards of the Coast, they're hiring like their third round of, of people to do basically everything in Arena. I have it on good authority and it, there's a lot of rumors floating around. So basically the original programmers, which were really famous people from like Valve and like Microsoft and all that, they all left. N none of them are around anymore, or at least very few of them. So the person who failed to protect the life total because they didn't think it would ever happen and it was important, even though we had a card that doubles life total, they didn't put in overflow protections, but whoever programmed uh, this in did. Probably right around the time that double the number of counters became a phrase in the game, but I don't know, maybe it was just inconsistent, different day, different person, who knows. Or they were testing and they just came across this and it crashed and they're like, oh, I probably shouldn't do that. So I, I knew that it's impossible or very nearly impossible to just say, I'm going to just arbitrarily make something that's a 30-bit value because I feel like it. I think you have to define that in assembly and like load a custom DLL and like, no, they didn't do that. I can, I can tell you, they probably didn't do that. And, and yeah, I, it turns out I was right. They didn't do that. What they did do is look up the limit, hit divide by two, round down, and then in the code say, if it's higher than this amount, limit it to this amount. So they just manually typed out that number themselves in the code to just limit it to that. It's not a natural phenomenon. And then I think they would have to hard code the rounding down, but they just know that they wouldn't want to round up. And the reason is because when you add them together, you can't exceed double that amount. If you rounded up the 0.5, you would exceed it by exactly one and you'd still get the error and something would still crash or something would roll over or who knows. So I thought, is there a way to test this? Well, it turns out there is. Take a look at this screenshot right here. I was looking at the number of 1-1 one, one counters, you know, in the top right there. Well, what happens if we zoom up and check the power and toughness? It's not 823, it's 826. Aha, mystery solved. If they allowed there to be 2.1 billion as a signed integer number of counters on a card, the second that they calculate the power and toughness, it would overflow. Assuming, of course, that the power and toughness were not zero or a negative number. So shout out to SKFOT for solving this one. I can't believe I didn't think of this. But really, the entire proof is the fact that that power and toughness is sitting at 826 for the last three digits instead of 823. I mean, it's right there in front of my face. I actually, while we were recording this, I looked at it, but it was too blurry and I couldn't zoom up in arena to see what it was. But now looking back at the footage and enhancing it in Photoshop, now I can see what it was. So I did think to look there to see if it was anomalous and see if it matched. I just... Couldn't. I couldn't do it live. So I almost had it. Well, anyway, that explains it. So now uh, you can all uh, sleep at night. <laughs> so wait till you see the other video today. Oh boy. 
Wizards doesn't know how probability or dice work, so they had to Oracle update a card. Oops. Just in time to hopefully ban that pile of crap. So uh, watch for that video. Uh, hit subscribe if you don't want to miss it. And I'll see you guys next time.